Hi everyone, thank you for joining the uh, Christmas Challenge uh, webinar today. Uh, we'll give it a couple of minutes, give it a couple of minutes, give people a chance to join and then we'll get started. Hi everyone, thank you for joining the webinar today. Uh, we'll give it one more minute, give people a chance to join uh, the webinar and then we will get started. Thanks everyone for joining the webinar today. Um, I will first hand over to Alex, who is the director of the Big Give, to give uh, you a welcome. Hi, good afternoon. Just good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alex Day. I'm the director of the Big Give. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you this afternoon. Um, I'm just here to kick off the call to, to welcome you and to thank you for giving up an hour of your time to hear more about the Christmas Challenge. Um, the Christmas Challenge is the UK's biggest match funding campaign. Uh, last year, we raised uh, £24 million for over 900 charities in the week of the campaign. Um, and from our years of running match funding campaigns, what we've learned is that match funding is a great way to get more people to give and people to give more. And boy, don't we need people to give more at the moment. It's a really challenging time. We appreciate that for, for many of you um, out there. So we hope this will be a good time to uh, find out more about the Christmas Challenge, how it works and how it can impact your amazing organisations. Um, we're really excited because last year was our biggest ever Christmas Challenge, as I said, £24 million. Pounds, and we're hoping um, that this year will be greater still. We have some, um, some great sort of match funding champions um, signed up for this year. And we're hoping to be able to disperse our biggest ever amount of match funding this year. So um, we really hope that you um, enjoy the session, that it answers any questions that you have. Um, and we're really looking forward to hopefully partnering with you um, in this year's Christmas Challenge. So I'm going to hand over to um, the wonderful Sahil and Beth, who are going to take over for the rest of the um, webinar. But just wanted to take the opportunity to say thank you for joining. So have a great session. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Um, yeah. So I'm Sahil, I'm the Partnerships Manager at the Big Give. We have uh, Bethany, my colleague, who's a Partnerships Executive at the Big Give, joining us today as well. Um, just a quick bit of housekeeping uh, before we um, start off. So um, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a Q&A box. So we'll have time at the end for uh, uh, some questions and answer any questions that you have. But um, as we go along in the webinar, if you do have any questions, please put them in the Q&A box. It'll help us uh, easily identify the questions and um, um, answer them at the end of the webinar. Um, there is the chat function as well um, in, the, in your Zoom panel. So feel free to introduce yourself to other attendees there. Um, try to avoid putting questions in there because sometimes they get lost as people are messaging. Um, but yeah, please introduce yourselves to everyone there. Um, you can do a bit of networking and make sure the um, two setting is set to everyone so everyone can see what you're saying. Um, and also we have the transcription service for anyone um, hard of hearing. So that should be enabled. It's at the bottom of your Zoom panel. So just uh, click on it and you should be able to see the um, subtitles. And finally, this webinar is being recorded. So if you do have to sign off or you want to rewatch it, it will be available on our YouTube channel um, uh, later this week. So let's get underway. Uh, one second. There we go. Uh, so just about this session, I'll give a quick bit of overview about the uh, Christmas challenge. I'll run through the impacts of the Christmas challenge, and then the probably the most important, uh, crucial bit, how it all works, and finally, how you can get involved, how you can get your applications in for this year's Christmas challenge. 
So uh, the Big Give, as Alex mentioned, is a digital fundraising platform. We specialize in um, uh, match funding campaigns. Uh, we give you a platform to showcase your work to supporters and phil our philanthropists who provide the match funds. Um, and all of our, as mentioned, all of our campaigns are digital fundraising ca campaigns, so donations are made online. Um, and we also hope that uh, taking part in our match funding campaigns can help increase your um, digital presence and your online invis uh, visibility and offering you, as mentioned, the opportunity to take part in our match funding campaigns. So since uh, 2008, um, over 190 million pounds have been raised uh, for good causes through our match funding campaigns. Um, our most recent campaign finished a few weeks ago. That was the Green Match Fund, our second ever Green Match Fund campaign, uh, raised uh, 2.7 million pounds. That's 900,000 pounds more than last year. So really great to see that campaign growing. Yeah, it's a um, environmentally focused campaign. Our next campaign is the Champions for Children uh, 2022 by the Childhood Trust, uh, launching in mid June. Um, so that campaign focuses on child poverty in London and then after that uh, we have the uh, this year's Christmas challenge um, scheduled to launch on Giving Tuesday. So Alex mentioned a bit about the um, sort of metrics from last year's campaign um, so just a bit more detail on that. Um, as mentioned Christmas challenge always launches on Giving Tuesday so it runs for one week um, last year's campaign, we supported the most amount of charities ever through a Christmas challenge campaign. The medium income of charities was about £500,000, so the majority of charities taking part were small to medium-sized charities. Uh, as mentioned, our biggest ever um, amount raised uh, through a Christmas challenge campaign, 20% um, up on um, uh, sorry, that's meant to be 20% up on Christmas Challenge 2020. Um, and uh, the most amount of donations raised across the whole campaign, um, average donation size was £144. I'm going to go into the impacts of the Christmas Challenge. So the way we measure impact is that we ask charities to complete a post-campaign survey to understand their feedback of the Christmas challenge and how it's impacted their organization. So uh, from last year's survey, 90% uh, of charities uh, said they would recommend the Christmas challenge to another charity. It's a stat we're really proud of and obviously we're continuously into improve that, get more charities. Um, saying they're pleased with the Christmas challenge and has had a positive impact on their organization. From those um, surveys that we've taken over the years, we've been able to break down the uh, impacts of the Christmas challenge into three key areas, um, resilience, skills, and profile. Um, over the next few slides, I'm just gonna go into a bit more detail about each of these, um, each of these uh, uh, topics. Firstly, on resilience, um, obviously it's really important for charities to have um, a diverse set of income streams, especially in the last few years that we've seen that um, the demand for grant funding has been um, higher than ever um, with a lot of squeezed income. So we really think it's important, especially for charities that are not already in the digital fundraising space to start exploring that and to make sure that they do have an alternative channel to generate income. So uh, we think that we're taking part in uh, match funding campaigns. It's a great way to explore uh, different income streams. Um, we've had a number of charities that have used the uh, Christmas challenge as a first ever step into digital fundraising. Um, so if you're completely new to digital, digital fundraising, please don't uh, be afraid of taking part in the Christmas challenge. There is a lot of help out there and we provide as much help as possible to make sure your campaign is a, is a success. Um, secondly, it's about engaging, uh, engaging supporters. So uh, charities always come back to us and say that um, it's the Christmas challenge and match funding campaigns in general have been a great way to engage with um, 
different types of supporters. So obviously this means existing supporters, but also um, it's been a great way to engage with new supporters. Um, the vast majority of charities that take part in the Christmas challenge receive at least one um, new donation, uh, one donation from a completely new supporter. Um, so a great way to um, uh, expand your donor base through match funding campaigns and um, really incentivizes people to um, give, you, give you a charity. And finally, engaging with what we call those lap supporters, so those um, donors that may not have given to you in some time. Um, charities have said to us that that incentive of match funding has really encouraged those types of donors to um, donate again to those uh, to their organization. So really, in general, match funding, um, that offer of uh, doubling donations really incentivizes supporters to give to charities. And finally, unlocking that uh, funding from our network of philanthropists, trusts and foundations and um, uh, businesses, and we call them champions, so I'm looking at champion funding. Just an anecdotal example of the resilience factor is that uh, when the uh, COVID pandemic started in 2020, um, uh, we um, launched an um, uh, uh, emergency uh, COVID-19 campaign uh, for the National Emergencies Trust, so they launched a national campaign and we focused on the match funding element of the emergency campaign and uh, for one week we asked the national emergencies trust to um, direct uh, donors uh, to from their own uh, website which was receiving regular unmatched donations to the big gives website which was matching donations and after that week the net reported to us that the average donation increased by 24 um, percent during the one week um, and they had more donations during that week of a, a comparative week, uh, a comparative week before. So, as Alex mentioned at the start of this webinar, is that not only does match funding encourage donors to give, it will also encourages encourages them to give more. On the skills um, topic, um, we find that charity is really uh, uh, use the Christmas challenge to test new ideas. Um, for charities new to digital fundraising, that just could be what we call sort of basics of um, getting that digital fundraising operation um, into gear. But also, we've had um, charities that are experiencing online fundraising campaigns and using the Christmas challenges as a way to test new ideas, new ways to engage supporters. Um, and the way that the Big Give helps with this is that we offer free access to training and resources to charities. So we have a suite, suite of resources uh, to help charities market their campaigns, some inspirational case studies from previous um, Christmas challenge participants. And um, in October every year, we organize a series of webinars to help charities plan for their campaigns. So um, we get in industry experts, fundraising experts from the FSI, um, social media experts, PR experts to help charities really market their campaigns. And as mentioned, all of this uh, resources, all of this training is completely free. We really hope that charities can use the Christmas challenge to upskill their, upskill their organization and uh, sort of know, uh, learn those skills that will not only help them for the Christmas challenge, but their long-term fundraising ambitions. So really invested in your success of your charities and your campaigns. So just some of the feedback we've had in the past for the um, uh, training and resources that we provided. And we're always looking to have uh, new ways in engaging with charities on the skills side. So um, we're trying to facilitate more peer-to-peer -peer learning. So we, we know that charities love learning from um, uh, love learning from other organizations. So we, that's one thing we're trying to explore more and more of. Um, so this is a uh, this is a stat from last year. So 86% of charities reported an increase in confidence in online fundraising um, by taking part in the Christmas challenge. So this is thinking about it. This is charities that are completely new to digital fundraising or very at the very early stage of their uh, digital fundraising experience. And also includes charities that are more experienced in um, digital fundraising, but even they, uh, they felt the sort of positive impact on their, their confidence in 
online fundraising and the Christmas challenge and the training and resources we provide. Hi, Sahil, I just want to pop in. Could you put your um, mic closer to you? Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, Thanks. Uh, hopefully this is a bit better for everyone. Um, on the last point is on the profile side. So what we've heard from charities that have completed that post campaign survey over the years is that taking part in the Christmas challenge has helped build morale inter um, internally and externally. So obviously externally with their supporters, but really important for organizations. Um, they found that it's helped build that morale internally by getting different parts of the organization working on the campaign, involving their trustees and volunteers on the campaign. And Chris, and they've said that the Christmas challenge has really helped galvanize and sort of bring the organization together for that um, week long campaign. Um, it's also helped be part of something bigger. Um, we know that Christmas is obviously the busiest um, fundraising time of the year. And taking part in the Christmas challenge, coming in one voice under that sort of umbrella campaign has helped help cut through some of that fundraising noise around that time. And finally, it's something to shout about. So by, we notify charities if they can take part in the campaign around um, mid-September to early October time. So you have that whole period in the build up to the Christmas challenge of getting your marketing material ready, going out to supporters and sort of teasing them about um, that match funding opportunity during the Christmas challenge. Obviously, the Christmas challenge week happens and you have a lot of content going out during that week and sort of engaging with supporters and finally, hopefully, after you raised a lot of money after the campaign ends, you can shout out a few supporters and just let them know how, how much money they've helped you raise and what that money is going to, uh, the good causes that that money is going towards. So on the next slide, I'm just going to give you an insight into how we as a big give market the campaign as a whole and try and get the word out there to the wide public. So. Let's make this Christmas our most generous ever. From the 30th of November to the 7th of December. In the Big Give Christmas Challenge, anything you donate will be doubled. 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 That means whatever you give it goes twice as far. Together, we can make a difference. To offer opportunities. To house the homeless. To heal our climate. To beat cancer. To care for our youngest. And our oldest. To nourish talent. To build a better future. Whatever your cause. And together, we can. Visit the biggive.org.uk. Between the 30th of November and the 7th of December. Choose from hundreds of charities to give to. And your donation will be doubled. I support the Big Give. The Big Give Christmas Challenge. One donation, twice the impact. 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 Must be the rumor of a good life. I looked into the future, it was all the same. I was under the sky, no roof around. Let's make Oops. this Christmas our um... Yeah, so um, what's that? Sahil, I just want to note there's a couple um, queries about low sound. So it's just if you can keep your mic close to you, but maybe some less movement, if that helps. Oh, sure. I'll also link the YouTube channel um, video for all of you in the chat, just in case you want to review it after this. Sure. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. Do let me know if the sound drops off again. Um, sorry about the sound issues, but hopefully you can hear me better now. Um, yeah, that was just the promo video from last year. Um, so we get tried to get a range of celebrities in and some really well-known uh, household names uh, to promote the campaign, and it was really well-received uh, promo video. Um, as mentioned before, um, the vast majority of charities that take part in the Christmas Challenge managed to re receive at least one donation from a completely new supporter. So um, if you take part this year, we hope hope you can um, sort of uh, engage with new supporters this year as well. Finally, on to the most important bit, which is how it works. So we get a lot of questions about this. And if, after I've explained this, if you still have questions, please do let us know. We always get questions about, about 
the actual match funding model. I mean, we understand it's a bit more uh, complicated than the standard match funding model. Uh, I'll run through it now. So we have the application phase. So charities must have a minimum income of £25,000 in the last accounting year um, to be eligible to apply for the Christmas challenge. And you must be seeking to raise between a minimum of £4,000 and £100,000 to um, take part in the Christmas challenge. There are normally two stages to the application process. Um, the stage one phase and the stage two phase, which we call the um, pledge collection phase. The stage one application phase involves completing the information for the project you are seeking to raise funds for. So the deadline for this is Friday 1st of July. Charities that complete the stage one process are automatically involved in the stage two process, which involves securing pledges for the campaign. Pledges make up part of the match funding pot and are in, this, in essence, your contribution to your match funding pot. So the deadline for that this year is Friday, the 2nd of September. So for example, you have set your overall fundraising target for your campaign as 20,000 pounds. This will be matched, made up of donations up to 10,000 pounds in online donations and 10,000 pounds in match funding. This match funding pot of 10,000 pounds is broken down into two parts of 5,000 pounds in pledges and 5,000 pounds in champion funding. So we have this charity here that secured five thousand pounds in pledges by the end of uh, by the end of August, start of September. We then shared that um, their application with our uh, network of champions. And say, for example, a champion has decided to support this charity with a further five thousand pounds. We will notify um, this charity between mid September and early October if they've been awarded champion funding. So now this charity is being supported by £5,000 of champion funding, which has gone into the match funding pot. So in total, this charity now has £10,000 of match funding. We then go into the Christmas challenge week itself. This, this year, it's between 29th of November to 6th of December. The charity has to raise £10,000 in online donations to unlock the match funding. The first £5,000 the charity uh, raises in online donations are matched by the pledges. The next set of £5,000 in online donations are then matched by the champion funds. So in total, this charity would have raised £20,000. And I'd like to stress it's not an all or nothing situation. In this example, if the charity raises £7,500 in online donations during the Christmas challenge week, they will still receive £5,000 from their pledges and they will receive £2,500 from the champion funds. So whatever you do, if you don't hit your campaign target in online donations, whatever you do raise will still be um, matched. So as I mentioned, if you do have any further questions about this, please don't be afraid, put, put them in the um, Q&A box and we'll, re we'll be happy to answer them in the uh, question and answers portion of this webinar. Uh, who we've worked with before, so um, in terms of the champions who provide the match funding from the big give side, we've worked with um, some of the uh, biggest trusts and foundations, such as the Julian Hans Rousing Trust, the Childhood Trust, Reed Foundation, and working like businesses like EQ Investments, um, who, who have been a regular supporter of the Christmas Challenge. Um, we've had some of the household names take part in the campaign before, but as I mentioned at the start of the webinar, the vast majority of charities that um, take part in the Christmas challenge are small to medium sized charities. So if you are a small charity, we do have help for you to uh, make sure your campaign is a success and the vast majority of charities taking part have been in your situation, so don't be afraid of applying. And in terms of where we've managed to feature the Christmas challenge in the past in national news publications, and we're always looking to um, expand sort of the public's awareness of the Christmas challenge and get in front of as many people's eyes as possible.
So we work to market the campaign as a whole and get people visiting the website to make donate to find charities that they want to support and make donations and have those donations double. Have a couple of case studies now. Uh, so we had last year we had Street Child United who uh, took part and they support um, children in developing countries um, through the power of um, sport. Um, so they they're a what you say is a small charity or small to medium sized charity income of less than five hundred thousand pounds. Last year was their first ever time taking part in the Christmas challenge. Um, they managed to secure their pledges from their trustees. So again, the trustees involved in the campaign and obviously very generous for them to support by being pledges for the campaign. But if your trustees can't provide um, pledges for your campaign, it's still worth asking them if they, they know anyone in their network would be able to help. Um, trustees normally have a great network. Um, they did multiple fundraising activities to promote their campaign. So during the actual Christmas challenge week, they had a film screening where they invited, uh, I think it was about 100 guests along. Um, they had um, leaflets with uh, QR codes on them. So while the film screening was happening, people could visit their campaign page and make their um, donation and have it doubled. Also during the Christmas challenge week, they um, had an online auction to engage with supporters and auction off some sports um, sporting items, which they managed to secure. And as mentioned, they've managed to involve the entire network throughout the campaign from the trustees uh, right down to their volunteers and get everyone working um, on the same hymn book in terms of um, getting the campaign a massive success. They've managed to secure 52 donations and 18 of which came from completely new supporters. So that in itself was a great, um, great result for them. The second case study is from Spitterfield's Crypt Trust. Um, so they work with um, homeless beneficiaries um, in London to help them get them off the streets and have them mental health. Um, again, first time participant of the Christmas challenge last year, and they used one of their sh um, shops to hold a themed exhibition um, to showcase artwork from the ben beneficiaries. So this happened over the Christmas challenge week. And because they had that artwork from their beneficiaries, paintings, essays, um, poems, all sorts of different, different things. It also supplemented um, their social media strategy and a lot of things that they could be posting over the Christmas challenge week. And this campaign strategy allowed them to test new channels. So they tried TikTok for the first time, which they found was a really great way to engage with supporters and interviewing the beneficiaries and talking about the artwork they produced. And they exceeded their campaign target by um, £3,800 and 44% of the donors were new supporters. And that's a massive average donation size of £500. And you may not have a, sh a sort of a retail store which you can use for this, but there, there may be some way, maybe a business in your local area could um, uh, supply their floor space for just one evening and you could hold some sort of an event to engage with supporters, maybe showcase artwork like this, or just have a good way to meet people in your community. So something maybe to think about um, for, for um, your marketing strategy and we can um, reach out to supporters and showcase your work as well. Finally, I'll move on to how to get involved with this year's campaign. So uh, applications are now, now open. You will need to create an account with us to uh, submit, um, submit your application. Uh, applications um, close, uh, the stage one applications close on uh, the 1st of July. Um, so if you're unsure if you have an account with us, um, contact us at hello at thebiggive.org.uk uh, with your charity number and we can check for you. Um, and if you create an account with us, you'll be it's completely free to create an account with us. It's completely free to apply and participate in the Christmas challenge. Um, and you'll also uh, be automatically added to our mailing list when you create an account with us. And you also be able to hear about future match funding opportunities from the Big Give. We also have funding for women and girls um, uh, from the DCMS's tampon tax. So uh, part of this funding will will be channeled through the Christmas challenge this year. Um, and uh, the funding is directed to charities working uh, with disadvantaged and un underrepresented women and girls 
um, uh, in England and Scotland. So you can apply for this Women and Girls Match Fund through the Christmas Challenge. Um, we have a webinar next week. So um, I think Beth will be putting that Eventbrite link in the chat if this sort of applies for you and you'd like to attend the webinar. So we'll be just delving into a bit more detail about this Women and Girls Match Fund part of the Christmas Challenge um, and uh, talking more about sort of how that would work and also the eligibility criteria because it is government funding a bit more stringent on what type of organisations we can um, fund. But please do join us for that webinar if, if you think um, you can apply for this fund. Finally, if you uh, think, well, maybe the Christmas challenge doesn't suit us this year or doesn't suit your fundraising um, schedule this year, you can also run your own match funding campaign throughout the year. Um, and uh, that's on the provider that you can provide your own match funds. So this is entirely self-service setup. Um, visit the website, um, the directions are there to find out more details about how this all works. But if you do have any questions, please pop us an email. We'd be really happy to chat with you further about this and help you get set up on the platform. And finally, if you want any further information about the Christmas challenge, again, visit our website. Um, and yeah, after this webinar, if you have any further questions, do, do um, pop us an email. We're really happy to hear from charities and have a chat with you. Um, that concludes the actual presentation. I'll invite Beth back on um, now and we can answer any questions I can have. Thanks, Sahil. So yeah, we've had quite a few questions come in. So I'm just gonna go through them in order and we'll try to get to as many as we can. So the first one from Jessica, hi team, we're just starting to fundraise as a charity as we've never done this before. We're worried about not having supporters who can pledge as we have no prior supporters or database. Can you advise? Yeah, so two things on that is I think it's always worth any organization to start building up a donor or a supporter database, even if you aren't planning on any fundraising uh, activities in the next sort of near future, it's always good to have that ready. So one thing you can start doing is um, putting sort of um, sign up links on your website and social media channels where sort of anyone that does follow you can sign up and hear about any future news for you so you can email them. Um, reaching out to, depends where you are, if you're working in a local area, maybe worth reaching out to local businesses um, and seeing if they could be a pleasure for your campaign. I'd like to also stress that you don't need, you, it doesn't need to just have one pledge for your campaign, you can have multiple pledges, so an individual pledge must be a minimum of £100, so you can have multiple parties become pledge for your campaign, or you can just have one person or organisation. So if you're working in the local area, maybe worth reaching out to local businesses and seeing if they could be a pledge, and also maybe if you've um, planning if you have any relationships with any excellent foundations they could also be worth asking if they could be a pleasure for your campaign we will be hosting a pledge uh, pledge webinar at some point in the summer so we'll try and get some of last year's participants on the webinar as a panel and just talk through how they based their pledges for their campaign I think also just to follow up on that, it's worth considering who's in your actual network now. Once you kind of sit down and network map, you might be surprised at how many people you already do know. And we've had people in the past, like other charities who've secured pledges from volunteers, from their trustees. So you just try to consider who's currently in your network and then you can expand from there. I think, um, Beth, you've, or we already had that um, marketing guide that has the information on them. Um, network mapping so if you don't know about network mapping if you start your christmas challenge application the marketing guidebook should be there so you could start having a look on how to do a network map that's new to you as well great and we've got a question from sue so we've run two successful big give campaigns last year my query is around whether we are able to apply for core cost to enable us to run the same schemes as last year or does it need to be a specific or new project um, so uh, you can apply for the same projects as you've done before. That's per perfectly fine. Um, you can apply for core costs, but the vast majority of champions are looking to fund uh, specific projects. 
So we generally think that's better to apply for a specific project so it gives you a better chance of being awarded champion funding. I would also say again, of course, we understand that core costs are important. So if you really feel like you need to apply for core costs, that is fine. I would just consider how you word that in your application. We want to make sure that you're you want to make sure that you're demonstrating your impact. So you want to consider specifically the impact and where the money is going section, demonstrating the impact of what those core costs will have on your charity. And that's what will appeal to those champions as well. Um, another question, I work for a charity that supports visually impaired people. As such, many of our donors are visually impaired. How accessible are websites during the campaign? So we do have um, some, uh, 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 was that accessibility requirements for our website? So their um, screen readers should be able to read the text on our website to help donors make a donation. Um, so, um, yeah, we're always looking to improve the accessibility. So um, if you, we'd really be happy to have a further chat with you and like go through our website and maybe you have some more sort of feedback on, on us. But as such, um, it our website should be optimized for the screen readers where um, which some um, visually impaired people are using. Great, thanks. Um, a question from Gemma, given the importance of flexible funding and the need to support the core needs of an organisation, will applications for unrestricted funding be encouraged and prioritised this year? So I think we've kind of covered this one already. I'm yeah, not sure if there's anything more to add, Sahil. I think, yeah, that falls into the question about core costs. Um, yeah. Cool, great. And you've just had a few questions about champion funding and the difference in pledge funding. So it might be good to break that down a bit more. Yeah, uh, I can, one second, let me just share the screen again as well. So we have that uh, visual cue as well. Um, just bear with me. Uh, there we are. Yeah, happy to answer any questions on this. Um, so do we have any specific questions or um, shall I run through again? Yeah, so I think it'd be good to explain what a pledger is, what a champion is, and then how yeah. they're different. Yeah, so a pledger is uh, your contribution to your match funding pot. So pledges come from your own supporters, any businesses that you know, any trust and foundation, but it's your contribution to your match funding pot. The champion funds come from the big gift side. So it's our network of philanthropists, trust and foundations, um, and individual philanthropists, they are the champions and then they make a contribution to your match fund. So you have those two different elements or two different types of match funders, your match funders and the sort of biggest match funders that make up your whole match funding pot. And then during the campaign week, the donations are first matched by your pledges. So they're first matched by uh, your own match funders. Once that has been exhausted, so in this example, that pledge uh, pledge amount is five thousand pounds. Once that's been exhausted, then the donate next set of donations you receive are then max, uh, matched by the champion funds. So the champion funds from the big gift side. Um, so I hope that makes it clear about how the pledges and champion funds work. I'd also like to stress that pledges can't be funds already secured by a charity. So they can't be funds that have been already paid to you. Then. Um, pledges pay to you after the campaign ends and they pay to you directly so that money doesn't pass through the big gifts hands um, so that after the campaign ends we'll send you an email and then you contact your pledges and then you ask them to transfer the money directly to you and we'll just ask you to show us a proof of transfer of those funds great thanks Ariel. Um, let me just have a question from Jane. What if you're not selected for champion funding? Can you still enter the campaign with just your pledges? Yes, absolutely. Um, if you aren't awarded champion funding, uh, you are still. we will invite you to take part in the campaign if you secure pledges. Um, so that's definitely an option. Um, from I think from last year's um, campaign, charities that secured the minimum £1,000 in pledges, I think it was about uh 85 percent of them secured champion funding um so those are sort of the how should I say the rough odds of securing champion funding as alex mentioned we have more 
champion funding available this year than last year. So hopefully we can support more charities. So hopefully more charities um, will be awarded uh, more champion funding. Great, and we have another question. Are donors able to ch choose to share their contact details with the charity? For example, if you wanted to share thank yous, I'm happy to answer this one. So during the donation journey, donors will have the option to opt in to receiving email comms from you. So we can say yes or no. You will see the email address for anyone who's opted in in your donations report. So once you get access to your campaign dashboards, there's a little donation section in there. You'll have to download the report and it shows all of your donor details, including the email address for anyone who's opted in to receiving comms. And also, for example, like the donation in the mail and the address details if you're claiming gift aid in-house. So you all have access to that um, information. Um, another question, is it possible that no champion will choose your charity? We've kind of briefly covered this, but. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to just uh, talk a bit more detail about that is, uh, yeah, there is a chance that if you secure pledges that a champion, you may not be selected for champion funding. Um, the way that actual review and awards process works is that um, we, after the pledge deadline um, on the 2nd of September, we'll share the applications with the champions and then they'll make the decision on which char charities they want to support and it's made at completely their, their discretion. And for that reason, we don't actually get feedback from the champions, they just send us a list of which charities they want to support. So there is a chance that you may not be awarded champion funding and unfortunately we can't provide feedback on individual applications as well, just because of that sort of discretionary um, decision by champions. Thanks, so you have a question from Eliza. What does the pledging process look like and does it need to be on a certain platform? So obviously, so I have covered that first stage of the application where you say what you're fundraising for. And then once you've completed that stage, you go on to the second stage, which is collecting pledges. So once you get to that stage, you'll all have access to a pledge form. There'll be a link that you can send your pledges, they'll complete the form, and then that's recorded on your Big Give ch um, charity portal. So essentially it's a, re record, a record of the pledge promise. Um, and then again, pledges don't need to pay you until after the campaign has actually ended and they pay you um, directly. And yeah, and it's a very simple form, just ask for their sort of name, email address, and just how much they're pledging to your campaign, some very basic details, so it shouldn't take more than uh, one minute to um, complete for pledges. Um, let me just have a question from Jill. I'm a little confused about the pledges, not sure how to set this target and worried if we can't reach it. Um, uh, uh, sorry, I don't know if Beth, you want to take this first or if... Yeah, I, I suppose the first thing in that first application form is just sitting down as a charity or maybe you're alone as a fundraiser, but just considering, you know, who's in your current database, maybe doing that network mapping exercise to see how you want to set your target. And um, remember when you're first initially setting that target, it counts your online donations target plus your match funds. So obviously this is your first time taking the part in the big give, you might want to set a smaller easy more achievable target for yourself and then you might increase that in future years but just as this consider who your network is now and you might want to even start reaching out to some of your pledges potentially before even saying that target if it's, it's helpful to you absolutely i don't think i have anything to add to that um yeah great advice there um can I just check please you have to raise five thousand from pledges to be able to be matched by a champion no, so that was just an example I gave. Um, the minimum amount of pledges you need to secure to be able to receive champion funding is £1,000. So charities need to be setting a whole campaign target of between £4,000 and £100,000. So you may decide um, you want to raise £4,000 in total for your campaign. So that means you'll need to secure £1,000 in pledges. Then you'd get £1,000 from champion funds and you will need to raise £2,000 in the online donation phase. So, yeah, you, you have that scale between £4,000 and £100,000 um, to receive um, champion funding. Great. Uh, some of these are repeat questions. Let me just have a look. Um, maybe it's worth just going over um, 
the payment amount. I think some, there have been some questions about um, what if you don't secure the full online donation target, what happens to your pledges and your champion funds? Sure, um, sure again. So uh, using this example, um, charity has 5,000 pounds in pledges. Uh, that's from their own supporters. Um, and one of our champions has decided to support the charity with another £5,000. So in their match funding pot, they have this £10,000 here. During the Christmas challenge week, they need to raise online donations to unlock those match funds. So their support, the charity supporters need to uh, visit the Big Gear website and donate to the charity. The first £5,000 here in online donations are matched by the pledges. The next set of £5,000 the charity would receive are then matched by the champion funds. So they raised £20,000 in online donations. A key thing to remember is that pledges can't donate during the online donation phase, otherwise they'll be doubling their own donation. So in the event that you, you don't hit your online donation target, whatever you do raise will still be matched. So in this example, if the charity raised £7,500 in online donations, they would still get that £5,000 from pledges, and then they would get £2,500 from the champion funds. In the event that the charity raised £3,000 in online donations, they would get £3,000 from the pledges. This, would, If they have multiple pledges, this would be pro, uh, prorated amongst them. Um, the pledges can still choose to pay you the full amount if they wish to, but the amount they're liable to pay the charity would be £3,000, and they wouldn't. this charity wouldn't access the champion funding. So during the Christmas challenge week, I think it's really, if you're being awarded champion funding, it's really important to focus on making sure you use those um, pledge funds to make sure you access the champion funds. Great, thanks, Arhil. Um, I had a question from Joe. What are the criteria for receiving the champion funding? So what are the applications graded against? Um, previously, our, tra our charity only got half of the champion funding requests. It would be great to know um, if there's some more details on that. Yes, as mentioned, yeah, it's champion funding is in, um, it's, uh, awarded at the discretion of champions. So we don't really have that feedback on what they've judged the applications on. Sometimes, as, as Joe has mentioned here, you may not receive all of the champion funding you're eligible for. And the main reason for that is that some sectors of champion funding are sort of oversubscribed, or we have a lot of applications for particular sectors, and champions want to try and support as many charities as possible. So they may offer partial, what we call partial match funding to charities, so you may not receive that full amount that you're eligible for. Um, so that, that's probably the biggest reason why you wouldn't have received the full amount, um, just because of like the demand from the sector. Great, and I have a question from Ellen. Is there any breakdown of what sectors are most successful through this campaign? How well campaigning um, organisations tend to do? Uh, we don't actually have that breakdown about what sectors are uh, sort of successful. Um, as I mentioned, Christmas challenge is cause neutral, so we have the full sort of gamut of, of, um, of different types of champions looking to support different types of charities in different sectors. Um, I guess our just advice is uh, um, just, yeah, be, be careful about what you want to, be, or think, have a think about what you want to raise funds for, and the crucial thing to making this campaign successful um, is just planning and marketing your campaign using that October and November time to really market, have your marketing plans in place for your Christmas challenge campaign. That's probably the biggest fact above all, which sort of determines how successful a campaign is, that organization of the, of the charity and in their marketing plans. Yeah, and I just recalled that we did actually have a blog on um, some application statistics from last year. So I'll make sure to repost that and put it in the resources section so you guys can have a look at some of the statistics um, from last year. But again, keep in mind that that was from last year. That's not necessarily what's going to happen this year. Um, Jay says, can we apply for the Women and Girls funding for a different project than the Christmas Challenge, e.g. have two challenges for different projects? No, unfortunately, you can only 
apply for uh, make one application for the Christmas challenge. So if you do apply for yeah, so yeah, you, if if you are thinking of applying for the Women and Girls Match Fund, please do join us for the webinar next week. I guess then we can provide more details on sort of the eligibility criteria, which is probably one of the most crucial aspects of it. And then we can probably assess better if what's better for you in terms of making a specific application for that Women and Girls Match Fund or making an uh, application in general for the Christmas challenge. Um. Emma says, can you let me know if we raise £5,000 if the supporters' money will definitely be dub doubled? And yes, it, sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> yes, it definitely will be doubled. Um, so when donors make a donation, they can see if their match funds in the match funding pot. So the match funds are available in real time. So when a donor starts the donation, they will see, they'll know that the donation is being doubled and they'll have 15 minutes to complete that donation to make sure it's doubled. Um, if they don't complete the donation within 15 minutes, there will be a pop-up window which says the match uh, match uh, the donation wasn't completed in the time and the match funds have been returned to the pot. They can continue and gives them the option to continue making an unmatched donation or restart the donation and have it matched again. So yeah, it, so in that essence, in that example that I had on the screen, if you receive 5,000 pounds in donations, they'll definitely be doubled. Um, we have a question here. Will the Big Give Anchor Match Fund return for the Christmas Challenge or are Charity Champions the only option of funding outside of pledges and live donations? Uh, good question. Um, so the Anchor Match Fund sits outside of the Christmas Challenge, so it won't be part of the Christmas Challenge. Um, so it's only the Champion Funds which is eligible for the Christmas Challenge this year. But we'll, we hope that we'll be in a position to run that Anchor Match Fund again um, at some point. Um, and Rachel says, how much help is given in finding champion support? Um, so you don't have to do anything for the champion sort of funding element. That's all on us. We secure the champion funds and then we share your applications with champions. Um, we'll categorize them according to what your sort of project is and what the champion fund funds are looking for. And then they make the decision. So you don't need to think about the champion side of things. Um, just need to focus on getting those pledges and then during Christmas challenge week, raising those online donations. Um, great, and we have another one. Can we put cash donations made via our bank account through the Big Give site? We have an in-person event taking place that week and we want to maximise opportunity. So a lot of um, charities do have separate fundraising events um, for the challenge, which is completely fine. We can't accept donations from the charity account, so from the charity bank account, um, but you can um, we can accept donations from employees or a trustee, for example. So potentially there's an option to get collect cash donations that way, and then a trustee or an employee makes a personal donation by their own card to your campaign on, so essentially a proxy donation for those, um, or you could potentially get um, someone from the event, so someone that's donated there to make um, the donations for you as well. But just, yeah, consider that when you're having in-person events, you might want to even consider making laptops or phones available at the event so people can just make donations directly via the Big Give campaign page instead. Um, but yeah, up to you to, to manage that. Um, let me have a look. Can you explain what happens with pledge money? Is it shared with other charities? No, the pledge money is entirely ring fenced for your charity only because it's from also from your own supporters. It's completely that relationship with your own supporters that you manage, and it's ring fenced for your charity only. Likewise, any champion funding you're awarded is green fence for your charity only. So it doesn't, yeah, it's not shared between other charities. Um, let me have a look. We have quite a few questions. So I'm going to see if there's any we haven't answered yet. Um, so just someone was confused about the maximum amounts. Can you just clarify the maximum um targets for the campaigns so the max uh, the minimum uh, amount you can raise through the, you must be seeking to raise is four thousand pounds so that would be one thousand pounds in pledges and then one thousand pounds in champion funds from the big give that means you're 
match funding pot of £2,000, and you'll need to secure um, £2,000 in, on, in online donations to unlock that match funding. The maximum is £100,000, so that'll be £25,000 from uh, your pledges, £25,000 from the champion funds, mix up that match funding pot of £50,000, and then £50,000 in online donations done with those match funds. So um, those are the minimum, maximum, and then obviously you can set your target anywhere between those two. Um, Jessica says, what if we raise more than we predict? So any um, donations raised over your campaign target just count as extra unrestricted and unmatched donations for your campaign. So you can still continue to receive donations even after you've reached your target, but they just won't be matched um, after that. And probably I'd like to just add is that charities that exceed their target are also eligible for the Christmas Challenge Awards. So as um, we have monetary prizes on offer for charities um, that win an award. So we have like 12 categories. So that's if you do hit your target before the campaign ends, that's probably the incentive to like, get donors to carry on giving. Um, we've got a question here. What is the incentive for pledges? Um, that incentive is to what we say is that their, their sort of pledge can have a, a four times multiplier effect for your charity because if they make that pledge, they can then um, you have the potential to be awarded champion funding. And then obviously the online donations are being made because of the incentive of having the donations matched by the pledge. So what we say is that, that um, to go out to your pledges is that thinking about it that way is that, they, that their pledge can be worth four times as much um, I think behind the Christmas challenge. Um, let me have a look. Uh, if we have discussions underway with trusts and foundations and corporate, is it permitted to work with them to time their funding to fit with the Christmas challenge and thereby increase the opportunity for double the total funding? Yes, I guess that's what you mean is if they're well, if they're a pledger, absolutely. You can ask them if they want to be a pledger for your campaign and just delay their sort of giving to you until after the Christmas challenge ends. But also, they can also donate to you during the online donation phase if they're not a pledger. So if they have access to a credit or debit card, they can absolutely be an online donor, donor for your campaign and have their donation available. So that absolutely really great to engage with plus some foundations and um, corporates. Um, and do we find out who the champions are? And also, if we secure one, do we find out who's um, our champion and can we thank them? Uh, yeah, so some champions choose to remain anonymous. So they will give them a sort of a different name and that's the name we'll share with you. And um, most likely they'll ask any sort of messages that, um, that you'd want to send them to the and we'll forward it on. But some champions are really happy to be acknowledged publicly and Again, we'll share their sort of real name with you and they may want to hear from you directly, in which case we'll share their email address with you and you can contact them directly. So it just depends on who the champion is, basically. Great. Um, I'm very aware of the time, so I'm going to just ask one more question, I think. Um, and for anyone who we haven't answered a question for, please do email us at hello at thebiggive.org.uk and we're happy to go through that again with you and I'm sorry if anyone I haven't got to yet um so what happens to the champion funds if we don't reach our full target so if you uh access some of the champion funding then you'll still get that amount that you have used up if you um and any unused champion funding it's up to the discretion of the champions what they want to do with it um, more often than not, they choose to roll it over to the following year. So um, in the event that you don't use up champion funds, it's um, probably likely that you won't receive it. It's very rarely that, that champions will still give it to you. So um, that's probably the most likely scenario. Great. Thanks, everyone. Again, Really sorry if I didn't answer all your questions. We had loads come in last minute, but please do email us any questions that we haven't answered and we'd be happy to get back to you um, by email. Um, not sure if there's anything else to add there, Sahil. Uh, 
Uh, that's perfectly a great way to end it. Um, yeah, thanks for your help. Um, and thanks everyone for joining us today. Thank you for the great questions. Um, yeah, and we hope to see applications from you. Um, but other than that, I hope everyone has a really great week ahead. Bye.